Hello, and welcome to this tips and tricks video. Today I'm going to be talking about using composites in ANSYS LS Dyna. There are two composite strength models available within the ANSYS LS Dyna GUI. One is called Enhanced Composite Damage, the other is Laminated Composite Fabric. There are other material models possible within LS Dyna, but those are all going to require a keyword snippet, and we won't be talking about them today. For either of these two material models in the GUI, you're going to need to create an orthotropic elasticity material model. This is within the engineering data toolbox, and you'll need to create orthotropic stress limits. So that goes for both of these models. If you don't do anything else, you'll get matte enhanced composite damage. That's matte 54 or 55. And I'll show a little later on where you can find the documentation on these models. So again, orthotropic elasticity, orthotropic stress limits, and the default setting of this shell layered composite damage model setting. This is located in mechanical under analysis settings. So by default, that's enhanced composite damage. So if you just put these two in, you'll get that material model. If you want to use the matte laminated composite fabric, you'll need to add in, in addition to all those things, a laminate composite fabric constants. Again, this is in engineering data. And you'll need to switch this option to laminated composite fabric. Again, that's under analysis settings in mechanical. Some other things to note when using composites. If you're using ANSYS Composite Prep Post or ACP, the composite parts can be set up in ACP, and then you'll just need to set up your other bodies in a mechanical model. So we have our composite shells created here, our other bodies created here, and then we'll just drag the setup cell from ACP onto the model cell of a Workbench LS Dyna analysis system, and the model cell from that mechanical model, again, onto the model cell in Workbench LS Dyna. The main thing to remember if you're using this method is to switch the mechanical model physics preference to explicit. That sets appropriate defaults for meshing, and it's an option that's located under mesh. There are a couple other things to note when using LS Dyna and composites. First, you'll want to use individual contact regions for all the composite parts, so things like a frictional contact like this. You don't want to use body interactions since those don't work with layered sections or ACP plies. So avoid body interactions for any composite parts. The other thing is that if you're looking for stress results at specific layers, by default stress results are only written for the top, bottom, and neutral axis of your composite. So if you want to write results for every layer, you're going to need a keyword snippet to do that. And that's going to look like this this database extent binary, changing the number of history vari variables and the number of layers or integration points to write results for. If you are using enhanced composite damage, there are a number of different failure results that get written to a user-defined result called EPS. Now normally EPS is equivalent plastic strain if you're using like a metal material model, but for the enhanced composite damage material model, that result is the percentage of intact layers for a variety of different failure criteria. So if you're looking at the bottom layer, so this set this position option to bottom, that's gonna give you the percentage of intact layers in the compressive fiber mode middle is going to be the tensile fiber mode, and the top is going to be the tensile matrix mode. So you can change that position here. One thing to note, if you're plotting the percentage of intact layers in the tensile fiber mode, you'll need to specify a layer number. The actual layer number that you put in doesn't matter, but the program requires some number to be entered under layer. And I'll show that in a minute here. You don't need any keyword snippets to see these results. And just a couple display tips here. One is that using the unaveraged display option tends to be helpful so you can see, okay, this element has 25% of its layers still intact. Another thing here is the reverse rainbow color scheme is a lot of times more intuitive because one means 100% of the layers are intact, so no damage 
and zero means zero percent of the layers are intact, so complete damage. And a lot of times people associate the red end of the color spectrum as kind of the bad end. So using reverse rainbow can help with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at a sample model here. All right, so here we can see in this sample model, I have some composite parts set up in ACP, some non-composite parts set up in a mechanical model. Those get joined in this Workbench LS Dyna analysis system. And if I open that up, you can see I've got my surface body from ACP and the ground here, if this were a drop test, from my mechanical model. You'll notice my contacts are set up as individual contact regions have suppressed the body interaction. Since the body interactions don't work with layered sections or ACP plies. So I have a frictional contact between this part and the ground and a frictional contact between this part and itself. So if I go down to solution and look at analysis settings here, you can see I'm using enhanced composite damage and if I insert a user-defined result with EPS, by default, the position here is top-bottom, which is going to give you kind of a hybrid of the compressive fiber and tensile matrix failure modes. So this is usually easier to switch to a single position. So let's start with bottom, which is going to be the compressive fiber mode. And I'm going to scope that to my composite part and evaluate all results. And so here you can see the damage. Now, as I mentioned before, sometimes unaveraged makes a little more sense. So I'm gonna turn the display option to unaveraged and evaluate that. Now you can see, okay, in places I have one quarter of my layers still intact. And again, if you want to switch this to reverse rainbow, you can right click on it, say color scheme, reverse rainbow, and that gives the more damaged areas a red color, less damaged areas blue. So I can do the same thing. I'm going to duplicate without results. And if I want to look at the tensile fiber, I can set this to middle. You'll see this go yellow, and that's because a layer needs to be specified. So I'll put in one, and sometimes you may need to click away and click back, and then it won't be highlighted in yellow anymore. Right click and say evaluate all results. And I'm looking at the tensile fiber failure mode and the percentage of intact layers for that. And we can do the same thing for the top, which is the tensile matrix failure mode. And I can see that here. If you want to learn a little bit more about the two different material models, you can find some more information in the LS Dyna keyword manual. That's going to be located under C, Program Files, ANSYS Inc, whatever version you're using, ANSYS, and Docu. And all the material models are in the Keyword Manual Volume 2. So if I open that up, you can see, okay, MAT 54, 55, Enhanced Composite Damage, and MAT 58, MAT Laminated Composite Fabric. I hope you found this video helpful, and thanks for tuning in.